Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom. This time we're going to look at various ways how we can achieve round robin playback in Ableton Live. And someone recently asked if this was possible in the sampler. And one of the first answers was no, only in Live 12, which is technically not true. So I'm going to show you how it will work in Live 12, but how you can achieve it in sampler and also if you don't have a sampler. So what is round robin? The idea behind it is that you have more than one sample per note played on an instrument. So let's say you've got three samples of A2 and round robin means it's being cycled through the different samples so that the playback of the instrument is more natural sounding. Let's first have a look at how this works in Live 12 in the sampler. So I'm going to actually choose the same samples every single time and I'm not going to choose the same instrument because I want to make sure that it's actually very noticeable what this does, that it actually really cycles through. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a sampler. Then we're going to unfold the zones and then I'm going to grab different samples. I'm actually going to grab the Mellotron Choir A2 here. By the way, if you're interested, I have a lot of Mellotron samples and also live packs available for free. I'm going to link them below. Let's take the flute as well, also the A2 and then the string section A2. And the first thing we're going to have to do is select all of them. Press Alt or Option, depending on how you call this. Then we're going to move the root note to A2. And in Live 12, that's basically all we have to do to make this work. No extra steps except for turning round robin on. And then we can select the direction. So we have forward, backward, other and random. Random means random, but that can also mean the same sample being played the second time. And then you can either choose none for reset, which most often is the case, or you can select any of the other time intervals at which the round robin is supposed to be reset. And then I've got a MIDI clip with A2 in it, and then we can just play through it. And so if I wanted to have a random, So as you can hear, that setting might actually repeat the same note, so it's not as natural sounding. If you were imagined this was all the same instrument note sampled several times, we could try backwards as well. And so on and so forth. We're now in Life 11 and I've set everything already up so that we're at the same starting point where we just turned on the round robin feature in Life 12, but we can see that it doesn't exist here. This method works for sampler in all versions of Life and it's been included from when we got sampler in Ableton Life. So what we're going to do is now go to the sample selector editor and then here the samples are already selected. Now I can do a right click and distribute ranges equally and then we are going to go into the modulation tab of the sampler and we can choose either the LFO2 or LFO3 that doesn't matter and we're going to turn the LFO2 on and then here at the bottom we've got two destinations we can choose that will be used to modulate with the LFO so we can select a sample selector here then we're going to turn this all the way up to 100 so that 100% of the sample selector will be modulated by the LFO. And then we can turn retrigger off because that, that defeats the point because whenever a new MIDI node would be played, the LFO would be retriggered, which is not what we want for this. I'm going to keep the sine wave for now and we're going to keep it at Hertz for the rate. And then I've already been fiddling with this and for three samples, the frequency of around 1.69 to 1.8 hertz tends to work quite well. Uh, 
So as you can see, sometimes it doesn't cycle properly through, but it does work. It's a little bit more random and it can be quite fiddly to kind of find the right settings to ha have like a true round robin, but it's definitely possible. So another option is trying different wave shapes for the LFO. So what can be quite interesting is also sample and hold, but you can also try the others. A square wave would be a good choice if you only have two samples that you want to alternate between. The kind of this approach is that obviously the round robin might not work perfectly and it can be quite fiddly to dial it in. But the pro is that here, if we go to the keyzone editor, then what we could do is we simply move these into the nodes. We can also spread this over an octave or whatever. And then we could just add more and do the same thing. And then in the sample select editor, we could spread them out like this as well. So it always has to be three zones if we have three samples onto the next one. So I've reset things so that we're basically at the same starting point. And here in the sample select editor, we haven't done any settings yet. So what we need to do instead is we're going to use the keyzone editor. I'm going to unselect. And so the first note or the first sample can get the root note. The second one gets one semitone up and the third gets a, another semitone up and so on and so forth. And then to make this work, we are going to use the random MIDI effect. I'm just going to drop that in and we're going to set chance to 100% so that it always happens. Then we're going to set choices to three because we have three samples in our example. So if you have four, set to four and so on and so forth. Scale is basically the multiplicator. We're going to keep that as one. Sign as like added on. And then we've got two modes. Random, if you want to have things more random. But if you want to have a true round robin then the way to do it is with alt so that's alternating let's play this <laughs> So the pro argument for this approach is the round robin actually works, but the way we have to key zone set up means that if we want to have individual nodes, we're going to be unable to do this in just one sampler. So we're going to have to select this group this so that we then have this in an instrument rack and then we'd have to duplicate this and switch out the samples and so on and so forth. So what if you don't have sampler? It's possible to use the instrument rack with simpler to create multi-sample instruments as well. So what we can do is you'd simply drag in an empty instrument rack and I'm going to go down drag in a two for the choir flute and also the string section. And then we go into the key zone editor here as well. We can initially select all of them and move them to A2. Reduce them to just one dot. Unselect. Move this here. And then we only have to do the same thing. And that means adding the random in front. Setting the chance to 100% because we have three choices. We can set it to three and then alternating and then we can play it. So definitely works. And if you want to create a multi-sample instrument with several choices, I'm just going to show you how to continue on with this. We can group this again, go here, and we can simply duplicate this, go here, and then here we're going to drop them off and I'm going to go down. This time I'm going to choose the A3. Of course, you can continue on and build this out for every single note or for octaves or whatever you want. No, that was the wrong one. And then the string section as well. Select them all, set them to A3 initially. Deselect and so on and so forth. And a pro of this approach where you put things into instrument racks is that you can also have different amounts of samples per note that you want to cycle through. So for example, if I wanted to put a fourth in here, I could set the choice to four and that would flawlessly work. I'm gonna take this down and then just to show you, I can duplicate this clip 
and let's just set this an octave higher and then we can just <laughs> And another way you can create round robins is with a drum rack. It's also possible to use any of the sampler variations or the variation with the instrument rack and just simply drop that onto a drum pad. You can also do it with just with the drum rack and in, in a drum rack. I'm going to put this in the F sharp one because this is where the hi-hats reside and the most fun use case for this is to use this for the hi-hats and so we're going to unfold this and then I've already selected some samples in here and I think I should be able to drag this in all at once and then we can still decide if we want to choke the sounds with the hi-hats that definitely makes sense. We already have them selected so we can just put them in to the same choke group. This way when a new sample is triggered the previous one will be stopped automatically and then we're gonna have to use the random again. So we're gonna drop this right in front of here. Same settings except this time I'm gonna set it to four choices because we've got four sample chains. We can set it to alt again. And in this case, we're also going to have to add a pitch in front of it. And we're going to set it to minus 24 so that the random will output C1 and up. And now we can add a MIDI clip and I'll draw in some notes. And in this case, it might actually be fun to use the random mode as well. But then you're going to have to make sure that you set the pitch one semitone down. This way you can get more interesting variations for your hi-hats as well. And of course you could just add an unnested drum rack that you built into a drum pad of an existing drum rack just for the hi-hat. Well, that's it. I hope you found this useful. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.